students and staff, I'd like to tell you how proud we are of these bright and very dedicated young men and women. They're the future students that our future students are going to uh, look up to, so congratulations. Um, it's been a very good pleasure getting to know all of you. Uh, thank you all for coming, um, and now I need to introduce Pro Professor uh, Julia Norgard. Creating the Honor Society was her idea, so she is particularly important to this or, uh, entity. Uh, she's put a lot of effort, a lot of love into this organization, and uh, has been a key person in seeing to its success. So, Professor Norgard. Thank you, Michael. Uh, on behalf of the AUK Honor Society Committee, I would like to welcome you. Just, I will echo Professor Washak's welcome. Uh, thank you all for coming for this very important day. Uh, we have important attendees here. We have our president, Dr. Thompson, our academic director, Dr. Bowen, the members of the Honor Society Committee, our advisors, our esteemed faculty, our wonderful students. But most important of all today, we have the parents and families of our students. Uh, we know that you are the powerful force behind these young people, lovingly motivating them to the best in their selves, their own excellence. Uh, on behalf of AUK, I want to thank you. Uh, would the parents and families please stand up? Please? Because we want to be Society Award Ceremony. I am following in the footsteps of Professor Vislimi uh, and Professor and now Mayor Schwendmetter. Uh, that very first Honors Award back in uh, 19, yeah, 2012, uh, <laughs> Professor Vislimi had us literally rolling in the aisles. He was so funny. How can I compete with that? I don't even come from Bukami. <laughs> I don't know Leonora, whatever her name is. Uh, so I really don't have any examples I can rely on. All I have is Joe Lunchbucket from Nutwood, Illinois, and he can't sing at all. The other person, uh, our dear Mayor Sven Ameri, gave a marvelous speech as well. Uh, but I think it would be politically incorrect for me to refer to his speech very much. Uh, to make it worse, right now I am teaching public speaking for the first time. And I just have this vision that I've got students out there who are marking down everything I'm wrong, and they're going to send my grade to me. So I have to remember not to flip my long hair, not to do the uh, presentation dance while I talk. I uh, hope I survive this. Nevertheless, since my career at AUK is probably not going to last a whole lot longer, I am really especially happy to be doing this today. I want to give you a little history. That's what history professors do, they get history. I think it was some time back in the fall of 2011 when several faculty members were sitting around uh, in Dr. Bowen's office and we were discussing the issue of grades. 
we were trying to figure out how to let our students know what the different grades meant. What, what do you have to do to get an A? What do you have to do to get a B? We wanted to set up rubrics so that the students could uh, understand. In the course of this discussion, Dr. Bowen spoke, most eloquently by the way, about the meaning of the word excellence. To his mind, an A meant not just good, not just very good, but excellent. A standard that really set the A student apart. In that instant, it occurred to me, and I think almost everybody else at the meeting, that we needed some concrete way to reward and encourage that level of excellence at our school. Uh, not only for the students who met the standard, but for the other students who would be encouraged by this and have something to shoot for. My words, as I recall them, were, we need an honor society. This apparently struck a chord with most of the people present, and we began the typical faculty discussion of, what does that mean? How do we do it? How do we set it up? Unfortunately, the old demon word elitism came up. Someone said, aren't we promoting a culture of elitism? Now, elitism, if taken in the populist notion of making distinctions, unnecessary distinctions among people, can be seen as snobbery or even undemocratic. But the very grading system that we were talking about acknowledges that some people do better than others. Some do very much better than others. Whether the difference is being smarter, or working harder, or working harder and smarter, it doesn't really matter because some students rise to that level. We are blessed at AUK with lots of very smart, very capable students. I've been here 10 years now, and I know that. I've seen them go through year after year. But it's equally true that we also have some exceptional students, those for whom the term excellence is appropriate. However, if you have ever worked on a university committee, you know that nothing goes smoothly, quick, or easy. There's lots and lots of discussion, much discussion, and weighing of the matter, how to do it, what made sense. All of us came from different backgrounds, different universities, so we all had a different perspective on what was the most important thing. We were, however, to, able to agree on the most important thing. Whatever we did, we wanted it to be the best possible experience for the student candidates who were going to be hope to participate in. We continue to tinker with this program. We've gotten some good suggestions from our current scholars. Uh, it's only the third year, it will only get better and better. The focus of the Honor Society is to identify those students who fit a particular set of requirements and then to give them an opportunity to do something above and beyond the requirements of the degree. Something that will be a major learning experience. Something they can be proud of and something that we can be proud of uh, as well as the school. The threshold identification takes place at the end of the junior year. The requirements are very stiff. First students must have at least a 3.8 GPA, grade point average. They must not have dropped or retaken too many courses. They must not have brought in from another school too many courses. But that's just the beginning. Once we identify these students, the major task for those who accept the challenge to become full members of the Honor Society is a year-long research project to culminate in a major work of scholarship. This requires a great deal of work. Am I right about that? A great deal of work. <laughs> but I sincerely doubt that any student would take on a serious research project like this simply to enhance their curriculum b uh, These things are noted as the golden line on your CV, people take notice of it. Yet, to take on a task like this on top of the rest of your scholarly requirements, the courses you have to take, the extracurricular activities that you all participated in, and some students work full time in their senior year. 
So it's an overwhelming test. The effort involved is taxing, the requirements are demanding, but the challenge is like a siren call. They hear it and they might go. Was I right about that? <laughs> okay. In the course of defining the topic, embarking on the endless research, and then facing the agony of putting it all together and trying to figure out what it means, I think they must have wanted to stuff it many, many times. Why did they not? I think it is the same quality or qualities that will push them through graduate school and into positions in their life where their education and talents will let them excel and be valuable contributors. Some of these qualities are, first of all, they have strong intellectual curiosity. They want to know about things, and they're willing to do the work. Second, they have a sense of commitment. Once they decide they're going to do it, they feel obliged to follow through. Third, they have a drive for excellence. The very thing we were looking for. The very thing we wanted to acknowledge and reward. The projects our three students selected had as a goal providing a serious contribution to the development of their own new country, Kosovo. The research analysis was designed to serve practical purposes, practical needs. All of their topics focused on areas relevant to the future of Kosovo. Paralinda Zanuni wrote about taxpayers' rights and responsibilities. Lorez Jahaya wrote about creating a futures market for agricultural products in Kosovo. And Arif Hati, talked about the export potential of Kosovo's huge natural resources. I think we can say that understanding the importance of serving the interests of their country is another quality of our students. I'm sure this has been a personally rewarding project for all of them, although right now I think they're very glad it's over. They have surely learned a lot and have accomplished something of value for themselves and hopefully for their country. I can only hope that the juniors who have been invited to spend their senior year working on this very special project will be encouraged by the current scholars and will also feel that silent call. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia. Very encouraging words. I'd like to give a special thank you, in fact, to each member of the Honor Society Committee, uh, Professor Norgard, Dr. Bislini, and Dr. Wachak. Uh, they have, uh, they're very concerned about quality education. They're very caring for the students. Uh, and their passion is to see the best of all students coming out of AUK. It's been a delight to work with everyone on the Honor Society Committee. I think we all understand that AUK has a very special role in higher education in Kosovo. The bachelor's program has three very important priorities. The academic quality, the career orientation, and all the things associated with professional integrity. Beyond what AUK represents, the Honor Society, as Jules has explained, it's, it's a special group of special students. Uh, this year, they've tackled three very difficult topics, and I know they raise more questions than what they solve, and that's good. Um, as you see their work and their presentations, I know that they've learned a great deal. And that's what AUK is about. There's one other word I, I just, before I hand over to President Thompson, just one other word that Julia mentioned excellence a lot, and that's what AUK wishes to see. I would just like to add one more word to the vocabulary. It's always meant a lot to me, 
as an undergraduate and later in life, and you don't hear it so often. But the word is, there were hints about it when Julie was speaking, but the word I was thinking about for today was stickability. Um, you know, whether you're doing a bachelor's degree, whether it's your job, whether it's all sorts of issues in life, sometimes you have to just stick to it. And it was Thomas Edison who said that famous phrase, all brilliance tends to be 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. So working hard, um, whether it's research or in your profession, the bulk of the time, it is just hard work. And to stuck to it, it says a lot about all of our honours students. This year at AUK, we've been through the semester conversion process. There have been many changes. And some students have not managed to stick to it. But our three people today have really stuck to it. And in their future careers, this is a very powerful thing in their character to have this stickability. I hope that as our students become members today of the Honor Society, two, you'll think about the future of the Honor Society amongst the Alumni Association. The Alumni Association is still relatively young. The Honor Society is only three years, it's much younger. But the future leadership role that we'll be having amongst the alumni, it can be very exciting. So congratulations to the three of you, and I'll now ask President Thompson to award you your membership of the Honor Society. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Brian. Uh, enough has been said, I think, about uh, uh, your accomplishments. Uh, I will only add that um, uh, we hope that you are proud of the education that you have received at AUK, and certainly AUK, the faculty members and staff of the university who have worked with uh, you during your time here are very proud of you. Uh, and the cost of that is that we expect great accomplishments of you academically and in your careers uh, in your future years. Uh, I congratulate you uh, for your achievements. And I think I'm supposed to give you a, I I'm to give you a diploma, but I don't have one, so I hope that someone has the uh, certificate at hand. I have to report Carolina Zinori, please. Today, I realized it was wrong. 
because the more the years pass, the more I need the care of my family. On September 4, 2010 was the first day at AK. At the orientation day, I felt totally disoriented. The bulletin looked so thick, I thought I could never learn the rules there. And I still do not know much of them. <laughs> the schedule for the first day of classes drove basic writing. Some of my friends had writing seminar. I thought that I was going to write some basic things in English while they are going to hold some seminar in the first day. The panic was that I was not the same as my friends and I was going to lag behind, behind me. Well, since, they, since that day, I don't remember anything else but studying all the time. Back to basic writing. The course was totally something else. It was worse than I imagined. Who knew that there are different forms of essays? Argumentative, narrative, cause and effect, and many other things. Or who knew what MLA and MPA meant? We would never heard of them. Imagine now, each of us does not even need an online, an online system to cite the sources, because we have learned them by memory. But the road to this point was not easy. At the beginning, we did not know what economics, public policy, and management were about. Supply, demand, purchasing power, exchange rates, tariffs, and much more concepts. However, thanks to our professors, we understood them and we still remember what they, meant, what they mean. Actually, thinking, thinking better, we exalted the subjects, the result was good grades, high GPA, but most importantly, the road led to the creation of values which we now hold strong, and that leads to the other part of the story. Last year, we were invited in the Honor Society dinner. In that dinner, I was feeling like someone is remembering what we are doing, and they are trying to award us for our commitment and great results. Following the recommendations of the previous year, we opened, we opened a Facebook page named the AUK Honor Society 2014. We laid down there all the problems, ideas, topics, references, complaints about this and that rule, worries, how we will not be able to write so many other things. However, that group, besides being a worrisome place, it was also a page of cooperation and friendship strength between each of us. We were used to that point to write papers, but not such a detailed paper. What feared us mostly was that we are not going to be able to submit the work that was decent enough and was expected from us. I personally, personally thought I never could fill the pages and write so many about that topic. However, when I started writing, it was totally a different story. At the end, I ended up removing so many parts because the paper was enlarging so much. This paper work caused stress, anxiety, hesitation, restless day, dubious moments, but among all, it was fun. It was a paper that taught us things we would never think they actually could exist. This one year work made us feel like we are living in the UK, but some of our roots will be graven here. I know that even after one month, we are all going to remember those things and laugh at ourselves, but what I know for sure is that we are going to miss the UK. Honorable professors, let me ex express my deepest appreciation for your valuable advices and lessons which made a strong base of our knowledge. I never thought I would be part of a system where professors would be that supportive and more friends than professors to us. You are an example we want to follow. Do I just start for such a rest of having the right family and team at your purpose to have a social limit team, financiers, just as to be kind to you, show me some clothes, for an extra pan of blues, please, a jet to see me with me. At this time, I would like to thank again uh, members of the committee, honors committee, and the professors, the president, uh, especially the supervisors of who supervise these wonderful students, and the parents and the other friends, and um, wish them all the best and conclude the ceremony, the third annual ceremony of uh, awarding the certificates to the students. And um, thank you very much for being here. <laughs> we have refreshments hopefully over there. Um, and we have a chat with uh, members of this faculty. Thank you.